Good morning, people watching in 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That Christ spilled his blood for our past, present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. That's the only way, that's the only requirement for salvation, is believing in that Scripture and what he did for you. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works is a gift, least any man should boast. It is grace that God gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. Grace is a gift, and the only requirement is that you believe in the gift of salvation. Because it is a gift. You reject that gift, you're going to be subject to whatever is going to be left here after the rapture. Because those who accept that gift of grace, accept Christ as Savior. Because when you accept Christ as Savior, you've automatically repented and you've automatically accepted his gift of grace. And the Holy Spirit indwells in you. Not only are you saved, but you are sealed until the day of redemption. That is salvation. You don't add to it, you don't take away from it. It's very simple. That's why. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. It's very simple to be saved. We're in the dispensation of grace. Yes, I talk about dispensations that I learned from Robert Breaker because it's true. It breaks the Bible down and makes the Bible crystal clear after you learn the dispensations. I've mentioned that before. We're in the dispensation of grace, which means we're in the church age. We are... In the writings of Paul, the gospel has been handed down to him by the Lord himself. Does that mean that we don't read the entire Bible? Of course, you can read the entire Bible. But we're in the dispensation of grace. The only requirement for this dispensation is believing in what the Lord already did for you at the cross. It's in the blood, it's about the blood, and it's about faith in him. Once you accept the gift of grace, which is the gospel, once you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you sealed and saved, but you're rapture ready. You will never lose your salvation. Period. You will never lose your salvation. A lot of people say, well, that gives you, that's an that's um, easy believism or whatever. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, all you have to do is believe. I don't know what the problem is. I really don't know what the problem is. Um, I don't. People say, well, that's a license to sin. But what you don't, what the, those same people who say that, they don't understand that once the Holy Spirit, it's all about the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And once the Holy Spirit indwells in a person, you don't want to do what you used to do. I don't know how, why that's not, uh, I don't know why people don't understand that. <laughs> you no longer wants to do because the Holy Spirit leads you to righteousness and the Holy Spirit over time changes you. So I don't know why that's so difficult for people to understand. I have no clue why. But anyway, I don't argue with them. Um, it's, that's just the way they are, I guess. I have to give you this article and I have to leave. Um, I have an appointment, so. It looks like Israel has struck targets in Syria from Lebanese, from uh, Lebanese airspace. And I also have here Iran, the U.S. says that Iran could have a nuclear bomb, not in months, but in literal days and weeks. Everything is pointing to war. That's where all this is leading to. Um, it goes on to say that, um, and this happened, I guess, last night says that, and this is off of End Times headlines, we're receiving a report that an alleged Israeli airstrike has reportedly targeted Syrian territory from Lebanese airspace on Tuesday night. 
This report comes from the Syrian uh, state news agency. The airstrike targeted sites in central and southern Syria and caused damage without causing any casualties. I'm going to link that in the description box and I'm going to give you a glimpse of this other article. It says that the United States is warning that the current pace of Iranian nuclear development indicates it could soon amass enough uh, faisal material to produce an atomic weapon. And you know, if they get a hold of an atomic bomb, Netanyahu has vowed that that's not going to happen. Well, I don't think Netanyahu's in charge anymore. I don't know what's going to happen here. This program is galloping forward. This no longer goes on the more the breakout time gets down. It's now down by public reports to a few months at best. I doubt that. I think it's a few weeks. And this continues. It will get down to a matter. It is down to a matter of weeks. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken testified before Congressional House Foreign Affairs Committee yesterday. Uh, the top U.S. diplomat added that it remains unclear whether Iran is willing and prepared to do it, to do what it needs to do to come back into compliance uh, with the 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action nuclear deal. Washington and Tehran began indirect talks in Vienna last April to discuss what steps need to be taken to bring both sides to a nuclear accord? Excuse me. Donald Trump withdrew from the uh, Joint Comprehensive uh, Plan of Action after insisting it was too weak to prevent Iran from developing nuclear uh, weapons and reimpose harsh sanctions on Iran after which the Islamic Republic openly began to uh, violate its nuclear obligations. The Ayatollah, the Ayatollah regime insists it will not reverse course until the punitive international economic measures have been lifted, while Sleepy Joe wants Tehran to first resume compliance with the joint comprehensive plan of action nuclear deal. Folks, this is headed for war. There is no two ways of looking at it. It's headed for war. And guess what? The U.S. will be destroyed. It's simple as that. I don't know who else is talking about it. I really don't. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. It's time to get saved. It's time to look to Christ to get us out of here because all this is leading to what's going to happen during the tribulation to the second coming of Christ. Uh, second coming of Christ is totally different than the uh, rapture. The rapture happens first. Then the second coming of Christ happens seven years after that. That's why it's a pre-tribulation rapture. Let that sink in for a minute because those who aren't saved, you're going to be left here in this mess. That's going to happen. And like I said, war is imminent. Just like the rapture is imminent, war is imminent. I'm going to link these two articles in the description box. I have to leave. Um, I will be back with the next video. Thank you for your support. Um, We'll see what happens because the days are getting darker and shorter. Thank you.